Hello and welcome back and today I want to do a very quick should you buy on this the H01 from SK Hynix. Heichi? Heichi? It may seem a little bit late in the day given PlayStation 5 has now been supporting M2 NVMe upgrades for the better part of two years. Nevertheless, SK Hynix, a big, big name in the field of SSD, something we'll touch on later on, has started rolling out their own proprietary all-component first-party SSDs. And alongside that, have rocked out the gate with their Platinum P41 and a PS5 designed heatsink bundle together and in this video I'm going to give you three reasons why this is a great purchase to upgrade your PS5 and I'm also going to give you three reasons why it might, might not be for you and you might want to sit on the fence a little bit longer. We're doing a deep PlayStation 5 temperature test on this device where we're going to be running through multiple games just like we've done with numerous heat sinks for PS5 before. I'm sure you've seen some of the other videos if you found this one, but this is going to keep things nice and simple. Bullet point three versus three. So let's crack on with point number one. What do I mean by PS5 design? That breaks down into both components, really. Now, SSDs have been around predominantly being designed and built for PCs for a long time. Need a lot of you, your first experiences with SSDs are probably gonna look like these. That is a SATA SSD. But things have moved on substantially in recent years, and now the general standard for mobile devices, for laptops, even desktop PCs, are known as these M.2 NVMe SSDs. Much smaller, running on a single PCB that can achieve thousands of megabytes per second performance by utilizing unlocked PCIe lanes rather than SATA which is what these are built on which give you about 500 megs cap. Now in the PlayStation 5 and we've tested many 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 drives and indeed heat sinks here on the channel in the past. Now this drive the one that this is included in this bundle the, the P41 here the platinum drive from SK Hynix is a slightly different beast to most SSDs we've talked about on the channel. We've done a full review for this, it should be linked below or on the other side of the screen where we did a huge extensive deep dive into this drive with benchmarks. In the confines of the PS5, however, what brings this out over other contemporary drives from the likes of Seagate, from WD and um, uh, from Samsung, they're, they're utilizing a proprietary controller known as the Ares ACNS075. I'm a hoot at parties. Now, that controller is designed to be way, way more power efficient. It's got fewer cores. It's a 32-bit uh, three-core ARM, um, R8, when the majority of SSD controllers out there are four or even six core. There's even eight core ARM 32-bit processors in the market there. But this manages to arrive with a much more power efficient and therefore heat efficient controller on board. That results in this drive utilizing less power, generating less heat, but more importantly, still able to hit the same performance numbers with 7,000 megabytes per second sequential read over 6,500 megabytes per second sequential write. They are synthetic benchmarks in a PC environment and during our PC review of this drive, it hit those numbers comfortably. But moreover, it hit them for quite a decent sustained period and arrives with between one and two gig of memory on board and on top of that, all of the components are from SK Hynix. SK Hynix produce uh, a, a DRAM or just SD RAM or just RAM on the majority of SSDs in the market. If you've used an SSD, there's about an average chance you've been utilizing SK Hynix components on board. But in this context, you have got a drive for the PS5 that will hit those performance numbers. We did three tests back to back. We got 6,500 on the reported benchmark from the PS5. Again, we're doing the full PS5 performance test and heatsink test in a follow up to this video. But alongside that, when you've got a drive that produces those lower numbers and you can get a bundled version where this thing is effectively free when you look at the price of this drive versus others out there, you are getting a drive that's going to run extraordinarily cool inside the PS5. And this PS5 design heatsink, they're not the first in the market to release a PS5 design heatsink. Sabrent were the first and we've tested Enotech and we've tested PNY. But this drive and um, SSD heatsink combo did extraordinarily well within the confines of the PS5 and it just worked. Just now I said it 
just works. But what do I mean by that with regard to the heatsink? Because the SSD, it's easy to say why it works with all of the components. Why does this heatsink work? Well, when you're looking at heatsinks for SSDs, if you're in the PC sector, there's loads of options open for you. You can get these big barrelly copper pipe fan assisted ones. You can get ones that utilize ports and connections on your motherboard, or you can get passive ones that cost you about 10, 15 nicker. This is the Ella 10. I, again, if you're looking for the most affordable PS5 heatsink, this is compact. It costs you virtually nothing and it will hold it inside. Why would I go for a bulkier, bigger, arguably premium heatsink? Well, nice and simple, because the space that's been allocated for heat distribution inside the PlayStation 5. PlayStation 5 utilizes negative pressure to draw in and push air, uh, push air in, uh, pull air in and push air out in a very efficient cyclone fashion when the system is at peak. Now, when you utilize the bay that the M2 NVMe is inside, that area can get super warm for two reasons. One, it is not directly in the airflow of the PS5. It's actually lower than the airflow of the PS5. And two, the PS5 has a cover plate that goes on top. So what you end up with, if you don't go for a PS5 heatsink, is a heatsink that is designed to draw the heat from the SSD, utilizing uh, thermal padding inside, and then dissipate it into the air. But a normal heatsink can't do that because it's trapped inside that little box you put the plate on and it can't get to the airflow and it's covered that heat from the heatsink is not being dissipated now this on the other hand sits on top of the ssd thanks to that thermal padding there it sits on top of the ssd in the airflow of the ps5 you don't use the internal the internal plate it fills the entire cavity. This means this is drawing heat from the SSD, as described underneath. Then all of that heat is being fed into the heat sink, which is in the airflow of the PS5, dissipating it into the air, with the PlayStation 5 pushing that air out the rear cavity of the system there. That is what I mean for designed and it just works. There's going to be users watching this wondering why on earth would I buy this SSD and a heatsink together? Doesn't this work on its own? Why do I even need this at all? And I think that's worth drilling into there. Now, when you do use an SSD inside the PS5, it isn't just about the confines and having heat dissipation from it. PlayStation 5 utilizes Gen 4 architecture. Each lane on Gen 4 can provide 2000 megabytes per second performance or two gigabytes. The lane inside the PS, uh, the M2 NVMe slot that the SSD is occupying in a PS5 is Gen 4 times 4, providing 8,000 megabytes per second of bandwidth. That's just a pipe, but the SSD inside, depending on its architecture, has to fill that pipe, let's say with water. And this SSD can provide and support up to 7,000 megabytes per second on that 8,000 megabytes per second pipe, 7 gig out of 8 gig. How However, this drive will get hot during that time. What happens to an SSD when it gets hot? Well, it does one of two things. One, when it reaches around 70 to 80 degrees, after that, it can do something called throttling. It lowers its performance in order to lower the temperature because it realizes it's getting too hot. The second thing, if it gets too hot, it can ultimately be detrimental and damage the onboard components there. Now, in a PlayStation 5 environment, when you are utilizing the drive and you're using it intermittently, there is gonna be periods of heavy activity and light activity. The heaviest activity is more often associated with write, but read activity is still going to generate a little bit of warmth there overall. And the idea is a heat sink for such a small sum of money, whether it is you go for like a $10 one or you go for a platinum bundle like this, what you are doing is elongating the lifespan of your SSD inside the PlayStation 5. You're also ensuring that the SSD doesn't get too hot and therefore the heat isn't being generated and pushed through the system in any way. Yes, a heatsink is going to be generating heat as it draws it from the drive, dispersing it into the air. But that's why you would go for that more of four, of, um, uh, efficient heatsink overall inside your system. Ultimately, you are talking about insurance. You are talking about getting, you could get the drive on its own, of course you could, but for a small extra sum that will elongate the lifespan of most SSDs by years, not weeks or months, years, 
it is certainly a worthy purchase. And getting them together inside a PlayStation 5, whether you are a pro gamer or even a hobbyist, there's no harm in it for the extra spend. However, we gotta be realistic. Not everyone's gonna see the benefits of this. And as attractive as this might sound to upgrade your PlayStation 5 with this drive and this heatsink, alongside those three great reasons, we gotta talk about three reasons why you might wanna give this a miss or just sit on the fence a little bit longer. Now this may sound a fraction counterintuitive to everything we've discussed so far, but there's actually going to be a decent number of PS5 users that simply do not need this heatsink. Hell, they may not even need this drive, and I think it's worthy for us discussing whether you need to go for it at all. What do I mean by that? Well, they can be broken down, I would say, into three main users. One, your casuals. I hate to use that word, but there's another way to describe it. These are people that only play about two to three games at any given time. They don't play loads of games, they delete them, they go back and forth. In those scenarios, they are, they do not have a heavy write rate. Also, these are users that are not going to need more than the internal 600 or so gigabytes capacity after the OS installation of the PS5. Those are users that are not really going to see the value in the upgrade. Alongside that, there's another group of users. These are users who have got a mixed library of PS4 and PS5 games. But moreover, they're using more PS4 than PS5. PS4 games can run from a USB. For those users, just getting themselves a USB drive. And again, SK Hynix have got their own high performance 10 gig USB drive. And again, the PS5 utilizes USB 3.2 Gen 2 connections, type C and type A, meaning you can get USBs like this one that go up to a thousand megabytes per second. If you're a PS4 gamer exclusively, then you're not gonna need an internal upgrade like this because you can still use external drives for PS4 games. And you can go to the third group of gamers there, you know, those that are using indie games, those that are playing games that do not require 7,000 megs of throughput for those SSDs to render and give you all of that access data to the games. Now, if you're using, you know, your cyberpunks, if you're using the latest Assassin's Creed, if you're using the latest Unreal Engine, then yes, those systems definitely, definitely, definitely need Gen 4 drives there. But if you're not running those games, simply the, the system doesn't need to deliver all of those assets there. And therefore, not only do you not need a super fast SSD, but the SSD inside your system isn't gonna get that hot at all. So just bear that in mind with what kind of user you are if you think you fall into those three categories, because you may not need these after all anyway. This is a minor one and it is worth touching on. As good as a bundle of getting the SSD and the heatsink together for your PS5 is, don't tell anyone, but you can just buy this on its own. You don't need to go for their SSDs. You can go ahead and buy their heatsink and it is compatible with third party SSDs out there. It seems much more straightforward to get it as a bundle, but if you were someone that was already locked in with another SSD or you're already using a third party SSD to start with, there's nothing stopping you just getting this on its own and enjoying the benefits of both. This last point is for those that are well, well, well into their future proofing there. Now, when the PlayStation 5 first enabled SN2 SSD upgrades in 2021, it was like summer 2021 when they rolled out the beta, Gen 4 SSDs have been in the market for the better part of two and a bit years. There were lots of SSDs in the market there. Those SSDs were the tip of the top at that point, providing 7,000 megabytes per second. However, it's now the start of 2024, and thanks to numerous leaks, thanks to numerous um, development studios accidentally revealing plans for future projects and compatibility, it has become abundantly clear that the PlayStation 5 Pro is a thing. The PlayStation Pro is either going to arrive at the tail end of 2025 or going into 2026. And with that, they will be scaling up all of the components. Now, the main component I imagine they'll be upgrading is the CPU and the GPU. But with that, they'll probably be moving on to, there's a better than average chance that they won't be using Gen 4 SSDs. They will be moving into Gen 5. And Gen 5 SSDs 
are fast. Gen 5 SSDs are currently looking at around 10,000 megabytes per second low and at highs of 14,000, 14 gigabytes per second performance there. Obviously, there's a question of sustained performance, heat generation and more, but if PlayStation 5 rolls out with a Gen 5 architecture in terms of its PCIe length, which is better than likely, chances are if you buy an SSD now for your PS5 and you were hoping to use it in the new PS5 Pro system down the line, that system might be Gen 5. It won't mean that you can't use these drives because Gen 5 is backwards compatible to auto negotiate with Gen 4 before it. But still nonetheless, if you're into your future proofing and you already have had a PlayStation 5 since launch in 2020 and you were thinking, I'm gonna ride this puppy out until PlayStation 5 Pro arrives, if you're going to buy an SSD now, there's nothing stopping you buying a Gen 5 SSD, which will work in the standard Gen 5 uh, uh, PlayStation 5 system. And then when you buy a PlayStation 5 Pro, migrate that new Gen 5 drive onto the newer system to enjoy the faster speeds. And if you go for the SK Hynix drive now and you plan on upgrading to a PlayStation 5 Pro, there is a potential chance, although not confirmed, that these this won't uh, give you the full performance possible or that this won't be compatible but that's all hypothetical right now these are one of the best options out there to upgrade your ps5 stay tuned here on the channel when we do our deeper dive review into this drive and this heatsink in the ps5 the review of this drive is already out there we've already published it it should be linked on the side of the screen and in the link below a link to nas compare so check that out but thank you so much for watching i hope you found this helpful let me know in the comments if you have links in the description to all of the components we talked about today along with guides on both playstation 5 and general ssd stuff and the free advice section over on nas compares the discord the community forum at ask nas compares and ko-fi and patreon to support us join our membership tiers and get free expedited support and consultations from me and eddie i'll see you next time